look up the word crazy in the dictionary and you might just find an asterisk beside the definition that says, listen to the Subiquitous podcast featuring Sue Duffield and you'll find out what crazy means. Sue's travel love journey of unfiltered stories, impossible miracles, and faith-filled fun will be revisited right here. So buckle up and let's get going with this humorous travelogue of an unfiltered saint, Subiquitous. You know, consecutive order refers to a sequence of events or numbers that follow each other in an unbroken or uninterrupted manner. In other words, when something occurs in consecutive order, each item in the sequence is directly connected to the one that came before it without any gaps or interruptions. For example, if a criminal serves a consecutive sentence, they do time for one conviction after another. But on the other hand, if they receive a concurrent sentence, they undergo all punishment at the same time. So in simpler terms, think of it like this. It's like a line of dominoes falling one after another without any missing pieces or interruptions. Each domino represents a step in the consecutive order. So whether it's a series of numbers, events, or actions, consecutive order implies a smooth and continuous progression. So, before I get into the real reason for my sequential order theme here, I will say that I'm currently experiencing a consecutive order of operations and surgical procedures of the removal of two kidney stones in less than six weeks. (sighs) This was not on my radar, nor is it something that I can jovially talk about right now just yet. But for the record, I will say I go into surgery again this week to remove a less larger stone, but one that has found its grip and needs to be removed. So two surgeries, two kidney stones in order or disorder, no matter how you want to describe it. Okay, now back to my original thought. You know what? As a kid at Christmas time, and actually any time for that matter, when I would listen to my favorite albums on my dad's W.T. Grant stereo, we would load the albums on the turntable, each playing their selected songs in order. Side A first, then we'd flip them all over to play what? Side B, of course. And except for the few consumers out there who buy the vinyl records This is somewhat of an anomaly right now to the downloading crowd. Just pick the three or four songs from a particular album on iTunes. Instead of playing the entire album, you know, you just pick the ones that you like the most. Well, believe it or not, album projects and the sequential order of songs used to be a big deal. In fact, that's why artists and record companies in the past labeled albums as concept albums or themed albums. Much like a musical from the beginning to the end, many artists and producers selected the songs of one particular project to be heard literally in sequential order from cut one all the way to the last cut, say maybe 10, 11, or 12, to be heard in order. Now, in the 60s and 70s, this is how we learned all the songs on a particular LP or album by an artist we loved. Here's an example. On Nat Cole's The Christmas Song album, I have literally memorized the sequence and can probably even sing the first few notes in the correct key of the next song. (laughs) It's so how I learned the music. I know that Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire is the first song, then comes Deck the Halls, then Adeste Fidelis, and then O Tannenbaum, and O Little Town of Bethlehem is next, and then I Saw Three Ships, and then I'm starting to cry, because the next song is O Holy Night, then Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and of course A Cradle in Bethlehem, and so on. So you get my drift. My brain and my heart know the album because of the order in which it was produced on the record. So what messes me up is, oh, and by the way, both the Carpenters Christmas albums were recorded and produced to be listened to in sequential order. I'm serious. Put the entire album on and just let it go. It's a well-crafted musical genius of a project by Richard Carpenter meant to be listened to from the beginning to the end. Now, some radio stations and streaming sites only extract Merry Christmas, Darling, and Santa Claus is Coming to Town from Karen Carpenter, all on their platforms, but there's nothing like hearing the follow-up song 
after Merry Christmas, darling, and before Santa Claus is coming to town. There's nothing quite like studying Scripture, too, in sequence. Eugene Peterson's The Message 100 Devotional Bible is literally the story of God in sequence. And I'm going to quote the description here. It says, here in the Message 100 is the whole Bible, every single moving word of it, laid out in 100 readings and arranged to chronologically reflect the unfolding story. Move through it at your own pace and discover how God may be moving right there on the page, right here in your life. What moves you? Beauty? God looked over everything, and He had made it so beautifully. It was so good, so very good. That's from Genesis 1. What about worry? Well, it's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Injustice? Well, God has moved to compassion when He heard their groaning. How about suffering? Deeply moved, Jesus touched their eyes. They had their sight back that very instant. The Bible tells a story about moving, people moving from place to place, from good times to hard times to good times again. But more than anything, it's a story of God who is moved by love and who moves, and yes, who moves us to make the world a better place in sequence. And it's like you hear God in synchrony, the divine order of things. Now, I always say, if you want to grow your faith, you must step into the divine order of things in your life. You must, by the Spirit of God, walk in the divine order of things so that your life will forever be joined to a God who is of order. You know, the story of creation begins with this grand prequel statement, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word is God. And then you go to John 1.1. 1, 1. This verse describes eternity past and the eternal realm in which God inhabits. This habitation of God is an uncreated, infinite, eternal, and transcendent realm that always was, always is, and always will be. A few verses later, we discover who the Word is from in John 1.1. 1, 1. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we see His glory, glory as belongs to the one and only begotten Son of the Father. That's John 1.14. Yes, that Word is Jesus. And now we can see Jesus in John 1.1 1, 1 from eternity past. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word Jesus, and the Word God, and the Word Jesus was God. All the Old Testament, which spans thousands of years, describes the events found between the verses of John 1.1 1, 1 and John 1.14. The story of all creation is given in summary by a single verse, the first verse of the Bible in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's the first grand divine ordering of things in which God created two separate realms, the spiritual realm with the heavens and the natural realm with the earth. This ordering or separation is a dividing. It's a consecration of one thing from another. The divine ordering of how things should be, of setting things into their divinely ordained place. You know, this is the grandest of secrets for any believer to discover, of discerning the divine order of things for your life, such that they can live in a way that God has divinely ordained for them. And until you step into the Lord's divine order, <laughs> pretty much, you know what? You're living out of order. You know, this all makes sense to me now, which is why I love devotional and sequential inspirational books. Take me on a journey. Show me how yesterday's difficulties translate into today's miracles. It's kind of like knowing what's ahead without really knowing what's ahead. But having the faith to believe will recognize that song because the song before set the standard. Remember when churches would post the numbers of the hymn selections on the hymnal board at the front of the sanctuary? Well, there are still some churches that do that, and as rare as it seems, it wasn't unusual for me as a kid to kind of sort of sneak ahead in the hymnal to see what the numbering songs were going to be sung that day. There was hardly an order necessarily on how they were picked, but it seemed to me they were always selected with the sermon or the celebration of the day in mind. I liked knowing what was coming next. 
That's just me. So be encouraged that even today has its roots in yesterday's misalignment or failure. It also has the synchrony of many faith days prior to get you through the most difficult assignment on this very day. I'm not at all happy about the two surgeries in less than six months, but I'm also grateful for the prep time, the chronological order of events, and the standard of doctor's orders and recovery time, which kind of says to me, <laughs> from James 4, 13 to 17, you know what, come on now. You who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. You know what? Enjoy life to the fullest under the fear of God. In Ecclesiastes 11, 9 and 10, Rejoice, young people, wherever you are, while you are young, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Follow the impulses of your heart and the desires of your eyes, but know that God will judge your motives and actions. Get rid of that emotional stress from your mind and put away that pain from your body, for the youth and the prime of your life are fleeting. So, the current song playing on the old record table is... Away in a Manger by Nat King Cole, and I know exactly what the song is next. It's joy to the world. And may you feel and experience the next song's total joy. It's the synchrony of life. It's the masterful sequential order of how God orders our steps. This ubiquitous podcast is coming into its fourth year Thank you for your support in 2023 and praise God for the hope you experience as we both travel and navigate this cyber world experience. Get on SueDuffield.com to stay in touch. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and for sure we'll see you in 2024.